welcome to We The People, I'm Sarah Jacob. India is expected to surpass China in 2023, but not in GDP or any other key parameter that we could pat ourselves on the back for. But, drum roll here, according to the new UN report, India will become the world's most populous country, surpassing China by 2023. Last month, the Union Minister Pralad Singh Patel had set the cat among the pigeons by claiming that India will have a population control law soon. And now, with the findings of the UN report out, a debate has begun as to what would such a proposal be like? Would it be legal as per the constitution? How would such a law be implemented? What effect could it have on citizens? Now, the findings of the UN report have sparked off a debate now over whether India needs to act more on its population policy programs. So, on We The People tonight, let's try and bust some myths and look at the facts. Is India still in the midst of a population explosion? Do population disincentives work? Is India in danger of losing its demographic dividend? Joining us on the show on We The People tonight, Anil Agarwal, Rajya Sabha MP with the BJP. He has in the past introduced a bill in a parliament on this to control population. Poonam Mutreja, Executive Director of the Population Foundation of India. Shant Prakash Jatav, leader of the BJP. And uh, Gansham Tiwari, spokesperson of the SP, Varis Patan, national spokesperson of the AIMIM, Dr. Nandita Pal Shetkar, a gynecologist at the Leelawati Hospital in Mumbai and at Fortis La Femme in Delhi, and uh, Malakapur, Shankar Das, a sociologist, a health social scientist, and gerontologist. Uh, thank you all for joining us. Uh, Purna Mutreja, uh, let me, okay, me start with you. Should we be worried? It sounds rather ominous that a UN report projects India overtaking China as the world's most populous country by next year. Should we be worried? You know, we knew we are going to overtake China. Uh, the new report has been... Uh, making projections. It's a yearly report and they've been making these projections. And in India also, we have the data to show that. So we knew we were going to overtake China. And it was India's population is decreasing. India's population rates are decreasing. We have reached replacement level, which is two, um, a 2.1. India has reached two. So we are only looking at the bad news. But let's look at the good news that population is stabilizing globally as well as in India. Hmm. And the reason India will continue to grow is because we have a very large population. And the large population can be a demographic dividend if we use it well. Hmm. After all, numbers are not, let's not only look at numbers. India has this window of opportunity for a demographic dividend. Okay. While India also has something to celebrate because government has done actually a great job of focusing in high fertility districts. It's very rare that we can praise a government on something that's happened. But this time I'd like to compliment the government for especially the last five years. Our NFHS data showed that in parts of North India, especially Bihar, UP, where the population rates are very high hmm. and the five states the population has come down and it's come down for all communities, all religious groups. So population is declining fast, but we have more troubles, uh, which is that India has a very young population of 360 million people. We yeah. need to invest in our young people in their reproductive health and on sexuality education, as well as family planning services to, should I say, access to contraception because young people don't mean, um, do family planning. Yeah. And th third, we need to invest in our demographic dividend, Got it. skills, education so, and so on. So I'd like to look at it as not bad news and okay. expected news. But I want to, the, the first point that you were making, you're saying that our, pop we, our population growth rate actually is declining. So. Uh, India is not in a midst of a population explosion. That was a myth. I mean, it is not a fact. Yes, it's okay, not fine. a fact. And now, every uh, time... Poonam, if, sorry, so sorry. then this leads me to ask, why are people pushing for this population control bill? But uh, let me not ask you about that. Let me just ask you, what would the ramifications of such a law, uh, what could that be? Like, what could the fallout be socially on women, etc.? 
Yes. So, first of all, it will have a political fallout, which I don't want to deal with. Let the politicians deal with. And we saw it in the emergency where India had a huge setback after we did a population control strategy, coercive measures. So we have lessons for India. But in terms of women it'll have a, and children, it'll have a terrible impact. And let me explain why. First of all, women do not have access to family planning. All women do not. Yeah. And those who do not have access or agency will be the biggest sufferer, which is the poorest uh, am uh, amongst all. And these women, there is 10 percent um, unmet need for family planning in India, which in terms of numbers is huge. 20 million a yeah. year, if we provided family planning services and women had agency, we will not have this unmet need. So it will impact women very badly. So you wouldn't need a, a control bill, you're saying, if we had, if women had agency over their own decisions about whether they wanted to have a child or not. All right. Yes. I want to uh, let and me second, let's just... sex selection. I, let me just mention that sex ratios will go down as fertility declines, especially coercion. They will be given that we have some preference in India. The sex ratios will become adverse, which will be a real problem for women. We already see the problems and China has experienced it and India needs to learn from that. So all the gains that we have made over the years slowly to reduce our, you know, the sex ratio and the sex selection and unsafe abortions, etc. We could lose all of that. Yes, that could be thrown absolutely. out with the bathwater. Okay. Um, uh, Anil Agarwal then, you know, let me ask you what I asked Poonam. If Poonam is saying that pointing out that look, the numbers are actually showing that our population uh, growth, the growth is, incre is decreasing. Why then do we need a population bill? There are other ways to fix this problem, better ways. Ananji. Hey, look, today Hindustan is doing a very difficult way. But when we go to the field, it seems that now the things are not being used by people. You can see how many roads have been built in the past few years, how many new airports have been built. ट्रेन्स में कोचेज लगाए गए हाईवेज बनाए गए लेकिन अभी भी हर जगह भीड़ नज़र आती है इसका मुख्य कारण यही है कि यहाँ पे पॉपुलेशन बहुत तेज़ी से बढ़ रही है चाइना का एरिया हिंदुस्तान से लगभग तीन गुना है और हम लोग अगले साल लगभग लगभग आबादी बराबर हो जाएगी तो आप देखिए कि पर पर्सन कितनी लैंड आई ऐसे ही हमारा जल संसाधनों की स्थिति बनेगी ऐसे ही दूसरे सभी संसाधनों की स्थिति बनेगी अगर हमने अपनी पॉपुलेशन को कंट्रोल नहीं किया तो आने वाला समय बहुत भयानक होगा क्योंकि जिस स्पीड से हम बढ़ रहे हैं उस स्पीड से ना रोजगार बढ़ सकते ना संसाधन बढ़ सकते ना बाकी सिविक फैसिलिटीज बढ़ सकती हैं और मेरा मानना ये है सब नागरिकों को आगे आना चाहिए और स्वतः ही अपने आप इसमें प्रतिभाग करना चाहिए और हिंदुस्तान में एक और बड़ी विचित्र सी स्थिति है जो लोग अफोर्ड कर सकते हैं उनके दो बच्चे एक बच्चा है और जो लोग अफोर्ड नहीं कर सकते वहाँ पे काफ़ी ज़्यादा स्थिति खराब है That's a very fascinating point. I'm sorry, I think we've lost a line there, but uh, a, a very uh, interesting point uh, uh, Anilji has uh, raised over there that uh, couples who can afford them are having fewer kids and unlike people who can't afford them, and assuming people who can't afford them, we're talking about the economically weaker sections, the marginalized groups, etc., the groups that Poonam was talking about at the start. So, Shant Prakash Jadavji, please come in over here. Uh, there have been various leaders of the BJP who have been pushing for a population control bill. Not, uh, you know, most recently, uh, the chief minister of UP, and his statements, you know, he's talked about popul population stabilization being uniform across different sections of people, uh, that the speed of population for percentage of one community is high, etc. He even talked about anarchy at a point because there'll be population imbalances in what he, in religious uh, demography he talked about. I mean, why, uh, if we're seeing that clearly as your uh, BJP MP, the Rajasthaba has said, and he's somebody who's presented this bill, asked for a bill, pushed for a bill in parliament. He's saying himself, it's actually the poor who are having more children than the rich. And this is across the board, no matter what religion you're from. 
जनसंख्या नियंत्रण के ऊपर सत्तर के दशक में कांग्रेस ने शुरुआत की परिवार नियोजन हम तो हमारे दो नारे के साथ में पूरे देश में ये कैंपेन चला और जाहिर सी बात है कि उसका कुछ ना कुछ इम्पैक्ट पड़ा कुछ नहीं बहुत ज़्यादा इम्पैक्ट पड़ा आज जैसे अभी अनिल जी ने बताया कि जिन लोगों ने जनसंख्या नियंत्रण को उस वक्त के कानून को जो उस वक्त में परिवार नियोजन जो आया तो उसके आधार पर कम बच्चे जिनके हुए आज वो सक्षम हैं और तमाम क्षेत्रों में वो प्रगति कर रहे हैं मगर कुछ लोगों ने उसका बिल्कुल पालन नहीं किया परिणाम हमारे सामने हैं कांग्रेस ने बलपूर्वक भी कुछ लोगों का मतलब क्या है सर आपकी अंडरस्टैंडिंग क्या है कुछ लोगों जैसे पूनम जी कह रही है लॉट ऑफ वुमेन वी डोंट इवन हैव कंट्रोल ओवर आर ओन डिसीजन ना हमारे हाथ में ही नहीं है तो मेरी क्या गलती देखो जो मैं मैं बताऊ ऐसा नहीं है कि किसी धर्म के बारे में मैं बात कर रहा हूं धर्म की बात करें तो उत्तर प्रदेश में इस वक्त जो स्थिति है हिंदू और मुस्लिम दोनों ही जो जनसंख्या रेशियो है वो 2.9 है बराबर है तो ऐसा नहीं है कि उन लोगों उनमें अवेयरनेस okay. नहीं आई है मगर उनमें अवेयरनेस जो है वो धीरे धीरे आई है अभी पहुंच पाए हैं और उत्तर प्रदेश में हम बहुत बड़ा एक जनसंख्या विस्फोट हो रहा है पूरे देश में ही हो रहा है तो मैं समझता हूं कि अगर ये जो अगर कुछ नियंत्रण बनता भी समझ है सर सर आई एम ग्लैड कि स्टैटिस्टिक्स आर बीइंग यू नो एम्फोसाइज्ड ऑन अ शो लाइक दिस इवन बाय बीजेपी लीडर्स बिकॉज यू नो इट्स इंपॉर्टेंट बट देन इट अगेन लीड्स मी टू आस्क इफ वे सीइंग दीज नंबर्स वे सीइंग दैट यू नो इवन इन द मुस्लिम पॉपुलेशन द फॉल इज फास्टर देन व्हाई डू वी नीड टू डू अ कोअर्सिव काइंड ऑफ पॉपुलेशन बिल can we not just continue to focus on education can we not continue to focus on help but let me bring in ganshyam tiwari when the up chief minister chose the occasion of world population day uh, to announce a new state population policy i mean honestly there should be no quarrel about this because this is up it's the most populous state and fact could be a country of its own but uh, uh, what is it that he says what is the intent behind this uh, why is this problematic to my fellow panelists and the viewers uh it is putting the the cart before the horse that is problem- problematic cart is the politics that bjp plays and how it it attaches the agenda of population in a misinformed and uh, misinformation model towards their overall political agenda of hindu muslim uh, disharmony as far as uh, population statistics are concerned we have punam uh, here and and um, an eloquent uh, panel who understands the underlying issues but i i'll just highlight one thing the rbi state of the state uh, survey on um, of 2021 states that in uttar pradesh for example the enrollment of girls in class 11th mm. is under 50% is under 45% in bihar for example the enrollment of girls uh, in class 11th is mm. 31% mm. if we as a country in a 21st century world cannot get uh, near 100% of our girls to graduate from class 12th and as many as, as possible to join college yes. if our our labor force participation of girls country and women continues to to fall not withstanding the beti bachao beti padhao and and women at work uh, campaigns of this government then we are not pursuing the right policies um mm. and if one an- analyzes the population data one will find that the girls who pass out of class 10 class 12 and join college the fertility rates are are lower not only that i'm sure uh, uh, population foundation of india has enough research to prove that such girls have b- better agency power in determining how their their family will evolve post marriage and as a result it, it establishes better gender balance so i think uh, there has to be a, a unison in in this country about using data better research and better better uh, proven credible institutions mm-hmm. that the population pressure mm-hmm. yeah to to make forward progress rather than create a uh, hue and cry uh, based on a political agenda i believe that what un report says is known to everybody it is just that the government has to act on what is known to everybody which is about education and empowerment and better uh, gender balance in decision making and gender balance in society absolutely what's okay. coming i want to just give me bring up those uh, the those statistics those figures that uh, shant prakash jadhav ji was just talking about when the facts show that uh, the number that the muslim uh, population is uh, uh, 
not growing rapidly it's falling faster than it is for uh, the hindu population both are following and but it is following at a faster rate so it's not a threat to the majority community in the future which is uh, uh, varis uh, uh, varis patan is that is the boogie that the bjp leaders uh, try to build a narrative around is there a danger of a demographic imbalance as the up chief minister claimed at a podium well uh, first and foremost let me tell you there is no population explosion in the country replying to a private members bill the union health minister mansukh mandavia on april 2022 the floor of the parliament yes. has stated so there is no population population explosion and there is no need to introduce a bill or to pass a law on that not only that this the matter was before the honorable supreme court where the government filed an affidavit in the affidavit also they said there is no population explosion uh, there is yes. no population explosion the total fertility rate has come down and so there is no requirement to form a law for two child policy or any kind of law entering the population now Bo uh, yogi and mr mohan bhagwat they want to target a particular community when yogi speaks about vyakti vishesh he is targeting the muslim community wherein as you just now rightly said that the population of the muslims are considerably decreasing that there are data suggestive of the fact that muslim use more contraceptives than the other majority majoritarian population so why, why do you target always the muslims when their mahans and their gurus go on record saying that bachche zyada paida karo hindu khatre mein what about that why don't you stop that today if they want to see a country stabilize in the economic situation then they should always speak about the uh, growing economy what about the loss of jobs there are several youths in the country according to me and according to my instructions are they don't want to get married they say we don't have jobs yeah. we cannot afford to keep our, our self uh, alive how can we feed our children yeah. there is this, this is the situation of in yeah. country so and demographic dividend you have seen yeah. how much youth is there more than 50% of the population is below the age of 40 there is no job the the muslims use the most contraceptive was merely to see to it that they want to target a particular community they are coming Because with this so i would like to so ask a simple what question you were referring to whether the union minister on the floor of the Sinha. parliament lied No, no. Uh, when he he withdrew that population regulation bill, which was I think introduced in 2019, because the health minister had spoken up, then he was saying that the the yeah. methodology that's being used by the government is working. There is no need for this outside bill or this you know internal intervention to say that you need a population control law, etc. So is the real intent here to single out Muslims? But I also uh, you know this makes us worry because then are we sabotaging what is a pressing problem? We do it would be in our interest to control population, but are we? sabotaging that by converting this into a hindu versus muslim issue when it actually is an issue of backward versus progress and if it's um, muslim women you can show that the majority perhaps more poor um, or, or uh, you know marginalized are from one community and hence perhaps why they are having uh, more children but um, we talk about women's education one of our panelists brought up uh, gansham brought up uh, women's education uh, uh, poonam has also emphasized how important that is but what about sex education can we bring in we have a gynecologist here uh, joining us doctor i want to ask you um, what is i mean yes we want to provide contraception but are is there enough awareness about this so what is the role of sex education in all of this because a few years ago when uh, smriti irani was the inb ministry uh, uh, minister she uh, there was this decision taken that there can be no ads on contraception shown on our tv dr palshetkar yeah hi thank you i think uh, what we are really discussing here is the reproductive rights of the women and i think that is a very important issue which we are forgetting in the midst of all this debate a woman has a right to her reproductive reproduction and i think nobody can take that away from her because whatever you say she is the pivot of that family and if you educate her if you empower her Uh, trust me all these problems will be taken care of and the so, more you but know but as a gynecologist what's your experience do you find young indian women uh, you know with different economic strata are they aware of the options uh, are they aware of the choices you know, there's a lot of difference i'm 30 years in practice now but when i began and today and as the president of the obgy society 
uh, globally as well as in India, I've traveled to all the places. And trust me, there is a difference, as Poonam says. We've worked a lot together, and there is a difference in the poor, uh, I mean, the underprivileged. Let yes. me not say the poor, but the underprivileged and the privileged people. There is a lot of information gap. There's yes. a lot of awareness. In fact, when we went to the underprivileged schools, they did. They, when you ask them what they want to do, they, want, they didn't know what they wanted to do. So forget about contraception and reproduction rights. So I think this is the gap Tragic. that we need to bridge. I mean, but as a lay person, somebody who is not political, as a doctor who works with uh, women's uh, reproductive health, would you? What would you say the easiest, the most surest, efficacious way of solving our pollution problem? Would it be like something coercive, uh, a, a punitive, uh, a law, uh, a ban, or would it be educating? I Girl, think we are right. a democracy. We need to educate. We've done so much in the last couple of years since independence. And we've really achieved. And as all the panelists are saying, there's no explosion. There is a stabilization right now. So we okay. need to continue okay. that. Let's work. get back to that interesting point. There's no explosion. There's a stabilization right now. But is that is there a negative to that too? Uh, we have uh, Mala Kapoor, Shankar Das, a sociologist uh, and a gerontologist. Um, Ma'am, this UN report comes in at a time when several states, UP, MP, more, uh, many BJP states are con considering controlling population growth. Um, UP also put in a draft to asking families, you know, if you that if you don't follow uh, the two-child norm, you might be punified, etc. But uh, there are horrifying prospects of India beating China, not in Olympic medals, but in pollution, but is the in population. But is there a problem, another problem that we've been missing? We talk so much about the Hindu Muslim angle. Uh, is there a problem with the fact that somebody touched upon it that uh, we are a young nation? And do we need, I, I'm not sure how to put this across, but my question is, if we crack down, how, is there a chance that we could go the China way? And what happens if we are a nation where the demographic, the demographics are tilted towards uh, the elderly? I'm not sure if we're even close to that, if we could, could have that problem, but I just want to ask. Uh, yes, definitely our concern should be that our population is aging fast. While we do say that at present, the young population is quite high, but gradually what we are missing out is the fact that the aging population is rapidly increasing. And soon we will have a phenomenal number. Our absolute numbers are going to cross over what China has in the next decade or so. So the question is, are we looking at the population from a holistic perspective? Um, do we have enough provisions, services, uh, care elements in place, which takes care of different segments of the population? I mean, while we need to focus on employment, young population and so forth, but we cannot no longer ignore hmm. the fact that aging population needs it. And what we need to keep in mind is also the rise in life expectancy. When we are talking of aging population, I mean, they're going to be from 60 to 90, 95 years. Hmm. The years people are going to be living. What is the standard of living? What kind of quality of life issues are becoming important? So my concern with the population policy is not so much in uh, bringing emphasis on control and planning. Where is the policy emphasizing on the welfare of families? Where do we have health provisions? Okay. We have social care aspects, which so we that is this about. has, uh, you know, this throws up concerns uh, of its own. It has its own fallouts. And as our planners, our uh, uh, government looks into this problem, this is an issue that we also have to acknowledge and plan for as we go ahead is what uh, you're saying. Uh, all right, we uh, we hope we've managed to look at this comprehensively at this issue. It, it of course, is not going away anywhere. Thank you all for joining us. Poonam Mutreja, especially you. I know you were unwell, uh, but you uh, managed to join us finally. Thank you all uh, for joining us We the People, where we believe it's important to speak up, but it's also important to listen.